everyone welcome back to my channel as you can see by the title today's video is going to be a car tour apologies if you can hear the road behind me by the way I just want to start by saying that I just wanted to find somewhere that wasn't my house to film this video and I've parked next to a really busy road so good life choices all around but like I was saying last weekend I picked up a new car so until now I've driven a Fiat 500 my little Flora absolutely loved her I did actually film a car tour of Flora as well so if you're thinking of getting a Fiat 500 or you just want to see what I was like years ago I'll leave it linked in the eye up here I believe up here up here somewhere but I have now upgraded sticking on the same kind of path I've now got a Fiat 500 X which is basically a Fiat 500 but on steroids <laughs> it's like a bigger version of my old car Flora so far I absolutely love it I've only driven it for about three days but it just feels so much more grown up I would 1000% recommend Fiat 500s for a first car I don't know why they get so much hate because they're a girly car like surely that's a bonus they're so cute it cost me £35 to fill my old car up £25 road tax a year and the insurance came down really quickly with a black box so yeah for a first car my fiat 500 was great r.i.p flora she's going to a good home but now i've got my big girl car so i thought i would show you around it today i know you will probably just want to see it so i'm not going to talk too much i will talk about prices and things like that towards the end of the video p.s this car needs a name i had flora this one is yet to be named i feel like she's a girl and i would prefer her name to start with an f because she's a fiat so please let me know your suggestions in the comments down below and i'll pick one of them let's go i'm gonna hop out the car now and show you the outside first here she is isn't she beautiful so again apologies if you can hear the road so she's black i wasn't too fussed about the color to be honest with you when i got my first car i was so set on it being gray i was really picky but this time around i was more worried about the spec and for what this car is it was a really good price so I probably wouldn't have chosen black because it is hard to keep clean but I do love it as you can see it's quite a bit bigger than a Fiat 500 I absolutely love the alloys on this car I do need to get them repainted or resprayed whatever it is the front two have a few marks so I'm gonna get those done at some point because this car was second hand I didn't buy this new there are also a couple of marks on the two back doors I don't know if you can see that there so I'll probably have the two back doors repainted at some point but I'm not in any rush to do so. I just think the wheels are so pretty. This is what the car looks like from the front. I'm going to keep pretty still because I know I've got to blur the number plate. But it looks similar to a Fiat 500 to be honest. It's just a little bit higher, a little bit bigger. But it's got all the standard Fiat features, the headlights, the bump down the middle of the bonnet. This is the car from the other side. And this is the car from the back. So it is a 4x4. Four four. It has four wheel drive. Which makes it really safe to drive in the winter in icy conditions. Obviously all four wheels control the drive instead of just the front two it's got the fiat 500 x logo on the back and this little button here is to help open the boot but i'll get onto that one thing i forgot to point out about the headlights is inside the headlights can you see this here where it says 500 i love that it's got so many nice little details like that this car is a diesel so the flap is this side on the driver's side and it does also have tinted back windows silver handles silver wheels i just love the detailing on this car this is what the key looks like so it is a key keyless entry and you can take the like spare key out here just in case the battery goes or something there is an actual key to use inside that silver bit it's got fiat on the other side my keys are really cute i like them okay let's get in so you can either press the button or as long as the key is close to the car you can just grab it and this little button unlocks it so i'm now sat inside the car hopefully you can hear me a bit better but this is what the dashboard looks like so we've got nice leather steering wheel to start off with my last steering wheel was cream and i did love it i didn't actually find it got that dirty that was one thing i had heard about the ivory ones mine was fine but now i've got black this steering wheel is also heated which is going to be really lovely in the winter obviously the fiat logo and these different controls i'll get through all those in a little while but if i quickly turn on the engine you put your foot on the brake and and it's got this button here there we go so in the dashboard this is one of the main things i love about the car it's so handy is that it's got a digital speedometer so you don't really have to look at the speedometer i never look to the left to be honest with you but you can change this center one with these controls on the steering wheel so if i quickly go through it's got some of the info so it's done almost 35,000 miles i've got 267 miles left until i need to refill just a load of different info really but i keep it on the speedometer one because i find that's the most handy when i'm driving 
in. So that's what these controls here are for. I'm still learning about this car, by the way, so if I miss anything, I'm really sorry. These are obviously for your phone, so you can connect your phone and you can speak to people through it. Like, if you press this, that's connected to Siri. You can answer calls, hang up calls, etc. but I never use my phone when I'm driving, to be honest. I just find it distracting. This over here, I believe, is for cruise control. I never use that either. And then this button is to set a speed limit. So if you wanted to set it to, like, 50 or 60, whatever, to make sure you never go over the limit, you can do so. Right, moving on to the center console. So it's got a touch screen. It looks a little bit dusty right now. Hang on, let me wipe it. There you go, my love. So I believe there are two different sizes of touch screen you can get in these cars. This is the bigger one of the two. I think it's about six or seven inches, but I really like it. If I turn it on, here she goes, fire her up. So it's got this system called Uconnect, which you just saw. I haven't figured that out yet. It's something to do with an app on your phone. I'm not really sure. This is touch screen, but the buttons along the bottom, you've got radio, media, that will connect to my phone. Here we go. What song are we going to get? Oh, a bit of Adele. Love that. Then we've got the navigation system. It's a really good sat nav, so that's really handy to have. Phone, this is for like talking to people through your contacts and stuff. And then apps. This is where the Uconnect comes in, I believe, which I haven't yet figured out. If I turn the engine on quickly, when you put the car into reverse, it does also have a reverse camera, which is so handy for me because I'm so bad at reverse parking. But that was a big selling point for me on this car. So that is the media system. Then moving down, we've got three buttons in the middle. This is the passenger airbag. It's not actually a button. It doesn't press, but it just shows you that the airbag is on or off. Obviously, your hazards in the middle, and this is for start stop. So this comes on automatically. It's basically like when the engine cuts out if you stop. I don't like that. I always turned it off on my old car, but this turns it off automatically but you can turn it on if you want to. Moving down a little bit on the vents, I've just got this holder for my phone just in case I need to use Google Maps instead of like the navigation system. But the sat-nav in this car seems to be pretty good. Down here is the air con, so obviously you turn it on in the middle, choose where you want it, and this is a dial to turn it up or down. And then it has two different air con systems either side, so whether you're the driver's side or the passenger side, you can have your vents at different um, temperatures or strengths or whatever. You can put it on automatic or you can just do the driver's side and press sync and then it makes them the same to clear the windscreen the button is here and to clear the back window the button is here moving on this is quite self-explanatory so you've got the aux cord a little usb slot and an sd card slot i'm not sure why you'd ever need to put a memory card in but maybe if you've got a good playlist on your memory card it's also got heated front seats so passenger side and driver's side and this is the button for the heated steering wheel so those are all the gadgets in the middle and then it's got a little compartment down here this is just where i keep my key when I drive. The cigarette lighter is in here and I've just got a bottle of hand gel. But it is a nice big compartment if I take everything out. Like it's perfect size for your phone or like me to keep your keys in. Then I have the gear stick. So this car is an automatic. I do have a manual license but I just prefer driving automatics. So it's quite different to my old car. You've obviously got park, reverse, neutral and drive. This bit down here is what feels really grown up in my opinion. <laughs> so this little dial, basically there are three settings on this car. So it'll be on standard automatically, but you can spin it round and put it into sport mode. This basically makes the car feel lighter and it goes faster. My dad used this on the way home from picking it up and he loved it, but I wouldn't use it yet anyway. I'm a bit of an old lady driver, but then you can spin it around the other way and this is for off-roading. This is the handbrake, which is very different to my old car. You just pull it up to pull the handbrake or push it down to release it. A little bit paranoid I'm going to forget to put that on, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. And then in the middle there are two cup holders, so in one of them I have have a car air freshener. I've had these air fresheners in my car for years. They smell insane. I just get them from Amazon and it just sits in the cup holder and you can adjust it like to open or close it depending how strong you like the scent. But the cherry one smells incredible. I'll link all my little gadgets in the description down below. Whatever is in here, hopefully I'll be able to find a link to it. And my phone tends to just sit in there if there's no drink in there. I'm going to move on quickly to the glove boxes before I do like this side of the car. So there are two compartments in this car the first one is up the top so this part opens and i believe this is actually air conditioned so in the summer if the air con is on i think this stays nice and cold so you could put a bottle of water or whatever in there it's only a small compartment but it is handy and then the normal glove compartment is down here in this one i just have some wet wipes some chewing gum this is my little change purse for parking i've got a spare pair of sunglasses and a spare little body spray obviously essentials in a car <laughs> i will put the car 
manual in there I've actually forgotten that that's at home so moving on to the passenger side this is what the passenger seat looks like I love these seats you can get loads of different designs on the Fiat they're half leather so half leather half fabric I think that also makes it feel like a proper adult's car is that when you get in it smells like leather it smells really posh of course it's got the 500 embroidered into the seat the passenger door obviously has the handle it's got the window you can lock or unlock the passenger door or from the driver's door you can if you lock this all four doors lock it also does that automatically when you're driving which i think is a really great safety feature the passenger footwell is surprisingly roomy and the chairs are really comfortable so yeah i'm pleased with it i'm excited to have some passengers in here i think that's everything on that side of the car so moving on to this side obviously behind the steering wheel we've got the windscreen wipers and the headlights etc etc just the same as every other car there's a few little buttons down here that i'm still getting to grips with to do with the headlights like you can tilt them up or down if you've got weight in the back of the car like if you're carrying heavy furniture and the car tilts you can tilt the headlights down so they're not shining in people's eyes and on the driver's side of the door it's very similar to the passenger side like i mentioned you've got the lock here to lock all four these little arrows here are to move the mirrors around so you can get them in the right place for your viewing and and then this little button brings the mirrors in so if you're going down like a narrow country lane you can fold the mirrors in so they don't get knocked by other cars all four windows are here i believe this button would stop people putting windows up and down like if you've got kids in the back or something and obviously the lock and unlock i forgot to mention but the other side as well has this same compartment down here so there's room for a water bottle i've just got a cloth like if i need to wipe anything down in there but they're really roomy little compartments here there's also a bit of leather detailing on the doors and then obviously underneath you've got the brake and the accelerator because it's an automatic so there's no clutch and that is everything in the front of the car i think oh hang on no i forgot this obviously the driver's seat is the same as the passenger as well but in the middle of the two this little thingy pulls forward so if you want to rest your arm if you're in traffic or anything but it's also a compartment so if i lift that up i've got a usb cable in there right now there's another usb slot in here so if you had a passenger and you both wanted to charge your phones you could and it's actually a really deep compartment in there perfect for like mcdonald's sauces or something <laughs> no i'm joking i don't know what i'm gonna put in there yet but i'm sure i'll fill it with something okay i'm gonna climb in the back and show you what's on the back seat Alrighty then, welcome to the back of my car. I've never actually been in the back, this feels a bit odd. But on the back of the seats there are these net compartments so you can keep whatever you want in there, maps or I don't know, that's what my parents used to keep in the cars before sat navs were a thing. But water, whatever, you name it. So there are five seats in this car, so we've got three seat belts in the back. The seats are also half leather, half fabric. The middle one is all leather though. I've actually got a towel down here because I do have a puppy. So that is what this crate is for, which takes up probably one and a half seats but obviously if i've got guests i can just take this out and put it in the boot or whatever but she sits in here it's got her little bed got a little chew toy for her in there and i've also got a ball and a stick on the floor here <laughs> this is the reality of being a dog mum but it feels really safe for her in here because there's no way the crate could go she's never tried to get out of it she's never tried to break through the mesh i really recommend this dog crate actually if you've got small dogs and you want to keep them in the back of the car it feels really safe it's also strapped in with a seat belt so yeah that's that and then i've covered the seat with a towel but underneath it's the same as the front ones really i think the left seat and the right seat possibly not the middle one both have iso fix so you could put child's car seats or whatever in the back of this it would be a really nice family car actually because it's surprisingly spacious in the back and the boot is massive as well so yeah i think you could put two car seats in the back of this i don't think it's three but yeah because i've got a dog um i like to keep the towel down to keep the seats nice oh by the way there's two headrests there's not one in the middle but my old fiat didn't have any headrests in the back which was odd this is the view of the front from the back it is a really compact suv i think it's called a crossover because it's not a small car but it's also not a massive car it's definitely in the middle so the dimensions of the car aren't massive but inside it feels so roomy i love it and then the back seat doors we've got the handles again that you can lock the back the windows are electric and they also have some leather detailing and these ones also have another little door bin and space for a water bottle it's got the little handle on the roof as well and a little thing to hang clothes 
Does anyone ever use that? I never use this, but it's there. So yeah, that's everything in the back of the car. Let's move on to the boot. My first impression of the boot was that it's massive. It's a really spacious boot. I can't remember the exact amount it holds, but I'll leave it on screen somewhere. I remember being surprised at how much you can fit in here. I only keep a few things in the boot. So I've got a couple of spare mats for the front seat, which I'll probably never use. I had this in my old car and I went through it in detail in my Fiat 500 car tour, but this is basically my little emergency kit so if I broke down or anything I've got a little waterproof jacket in here this is my shopping bag I've got some more cloths I've got jump leads I've got some de-icer and an ice scraper like just everything that you would need I think there's even a tire pressure checker a high vis jacket a first aid kit like honestly I want to be prepared for any situation I'll try and link everything that's in this little emergency kit in the description down below in its own little section so it's easy to find I would really recommend it it's nice to have it like I've never had to use it luckily I do use the shopping bag a lot though surprise but it's just nice to know that I've got it on me and it's also got velcro on the bottom of it so it's not gonna fall over when you're driving I've also got a little blanket in here either for if I broke down or if I wanted to go for a picnic or something and a spare carrier bag this is also one of those triangles that you put out if you break down behind the car that's reflective so that is what I keep in the boot on a day-to-day -day basis I'm sure it will quickly have shopping bags and stuff in here and then this lifts up so i'm just going to lift the whole thing just to quickly show you there is a full-sized spare tire but again this would be a really good family car because you could fit a buggy or whatever in here it's really really spacious or if you've got big dogs there's a handle up here to pull the boot down and let's get back in and have a little chat oh i forgot to show you up here because i've never looked up here to be honest with you there's a few different buttons i'm guessing for the mirror or for the lights the mirror also has a power button on it um, I don't know what that does. As you can probably tell, this car is still very new to me. I am still figuring it all out, but I just wanted to show you guys because I absolutely love it. I watched so many of these videos about Fiat 500 X's before I bought this car. So if you're in the same position and you're thinking about getting one of these, so far, I would really recommend it. I'm not the most confident of drivers, but to be honest, that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to upgrade to a slightly bigger car. Because the car is slightly elevated, I would say it's like similar to a Nissan G Duke. it's a little bit higher the seating position is a little bit higher too the vision in this car is really good too the mirrors are really big i can see everything around me really well at all times so i would really recommend this car so far as for reliability i've seen people online sometimes slate fiat's i know there's that saying fix it again tomorrow but with my old fiat i never had one problem with it so that was part of the reason why i wanted to stick with a fiat because i like them as a brand the other options i was considering were nissan dukes or renault clio but then I came across this 500X and I just knew straight away that was going to be my next car. Another really great feature is that it has blind spot assist so if you're on the motorway and you've got a car behind you you're wanting to switch lanes but you can't really see it if it's in your blind spot on the wing mirrors there's a little orange light that pops up so that's basically telling you there's something you can't see so that's a really great safety feature as well obviously the reverse camera is really handy I'm sure there are features I've forgotten to talk about. That was the main selling point for me with this car to be honest was the spec there were a Lot of different safety features i love that the car automatically locks as you're driving along literally i think i pull off my driveway and five seconds later the whole car locks itself so no one could get in from the outside if i was in traffic or anything and being a young girl i do think about things like that a lot i'm trying to think if there's any more features i've missed if there is and you know there is please let me know in the comments down below because i'm sure people will read the comments if they're thinking of buying one of these cars my mind's gone blank i feel like there's quite a lot to take in it's a big upgrade from my old car so as for price these cars are brand new I think are around £30,000 which is a lot of money. I don't think I would ever buy a brand new car but this car had two owners before me so the price had come down a significant amount. As for road tax for this car I pay £170 a year. To fill it up with a tank of diesel is around £50. Anywhere between £45 and £55 I would say depending on whether you use the standard diesel or the like special diesel. As for insurance this is where it gets a little bit confusing for me and I'm sorry if this isn't too much help to anyone but basically my insurance is up for renewal in July it's now April so I don't have that long left so it wasn't worth completely switching over instead I paid a one-off fee of £100.87 to switch my car over to this one and then my standard payments of £46 a month that's what I pay every month for my insurance for my old car that stays as normal until the end of this year so instead of switching the whole thing I just paid the end of my contract because I think in July I'm going to switch to another company which is cheaper as I said before I was paying £46 insurance a 
month for my fee at 500 and i've had a look online and i think this one's going to be around 55 pounds a month so not much more to be honest with you so that's what i'm thinking i'm going to do in july i'm 22 by the way i've been driving for almost four years so my insurance has come down a lot i've always had a black box on my car to bring the insurance down and i do have to have a black box fitted to this one because i'm currently with the co-op car insurance and it's just part of their policy you've got to have a black box even though i'll only be with them until july and i think that is pretty much everything i didn't show you these little visors here you go in case you were desperate to see i think you've now seen every inch of this car if anyone has any questions at all about this car let me know in the comments down below i will be checking them i will be answering all your questions i'll try my best anyway i mean i'm no expert i'm clearly still very new to this car but yeah i'll give it my best shot to answer your questions don't forget to leave your name suggestions in the comments down below as well because i need to name her it feels wrong not having a name if i've missed anything out be sure to let me know that is absolutely fine and i think that is everything so thank you very much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you found it helpful if you're thinking of buying a fiat 500x do it it's a beautiful car oh i forgot to say this is one last thing this is a two liter engine my previous car was a 1.2 liter engine so i've gone up quite a bit and it feels really smooth to drive just thought i'd throw that in there but yeah i hope you're having a lovely day do subscribe to see my future videos stick around i upload weekly vlogs every sunday morning and i'll most likely be filming some drive with me sometime soon but anyway my loves thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again soon with another little video bye guys love ya